Learning objective number three, use process costing in the first production department. Okay, so let's see how this is actually working. How does process costing work? Using the weighted average method. Step one, we're gonna summarize the flow of physical units. Step two, we're gonna complete output in terms of the equivalent units. Step three, we're gonna summarize total costs to account for. Step four, we're gonna compute the cost per equivalent unit. Step five, we're gonna assign total costs to the units completed and to the units in ending work in process. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go through this by a spreadsheet to make it so that we see things as we need to see them rather than having everything so that we can be distracted. But the first thing we need to do is figure out how many units do we need to account for. So the step, the first step is gonna be the flow of physical units. So we're first gonna start with the beginning work in process. And we're gonna use October 1st as the date. So I guess we're starting the uh, tracking of all this on October 1st. This is uh, an analysis we're going to do for the month ended October 31st. So naturally the beginning is going to be October 1st. And let's assume for now that we started off with zero. So this was a, maybe it was the brand new company, the start of everything, or maybe they cleared everything out for this month. And when you're actually working on this in your homework problems, you're going to be provided the beginning working process. In this case, it's zero. You're also going to be told how many units were actually started. They'll tell you that started in production during October, 50,000 units. You're going to know that you need to add to, the to this schedule plus started in production during October, and you'll be giving this, but it looks like we started 50,000 units. From that, we can then compute the total physical units to account for. So let's sum up what we started off with and what we added, we added to production for that period of time, and we end up with 50,000 units. So this is total physical units to account for. Now, in the second part of this schedule, we're now going to look at accounting for those 50 units. So this is going to be units accounted, accounted for. And we're going to keep track of units that were completed and transferred, transferred out during October. Units that were completed and transferred out during, during October. This will be given to you as well. Let's say we had 40,000 units. Plus, plus what? Ending work in process. as of October 31st, in this example here, 10,000. There's nothing here we've had to compute. So far, everything we have has to be provided. Although we could have surmised that, well, if we completed and transferred out in, in October 40, and we know we have 50 to account for, then that must leave, that must have left 10 in any work in process. We might have been able to do that, but. Um, chances are the information would have been given to you. So fit total physical, physical units accounted for. And we're just confirming that we know we have to account for 50,000 units. And we're just confirming it by adding it up here. And we know that this number needs to be equal to this. That's when we know we've accounted for everything. So we're provided this 
and then we, we start working on, a, you know, how we're accounting for all those 50,000 units. And this helps us to confirm. So this is step number one. We've nailed step number one already. So we did step one, summarize the flow of physical units. We're gonna to move to step two, compute output in terms of equivalent units. Okay, so we're gonna move down to step number two. We're gonna move down to the bottom where we've accounted for everything. This, this step, first step was just to make sure that we have the correct number of units accounted for. Now, once we've, once we've confirmed that, we're gonna move down to this section and we're gonna break this up between direct materials and conversion, conversion costs. Now, when we have something that's completed and transferred out, and we're talking about 40,000 units, well, if it's finished, completed and transferred out, then we've, in terms of equivalent units for direct materials, it must have been, 40,000 units of, of direct materials. In addition to that, the com this, this is the actual direct materials and then our conversion costs, which you recall are made up of costs associated with direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Well, in terms of equivalent units, we're gonna refer to that as 40,000 as well. Why? Because they're 100% complete. When they say it's completed and transferred out, the equivalent units in terms of direct materials is 40,000. Remember how to compute equivalent units. We take the number of physical units, multiply it by the percentage of completion. Well, if something is finished, completed and transferred out, then the equivalent units of 40,000 as it relates specifically to direct materials would be 40,000 and as it relates to conversion, 40,000, it's finished, they're all done. Now, the ending work in process is a bit of a trick here because obviously the products are not 100% complete. So there are 10,000 units that are sitting in work in process, they're not finished. What is the equivalent units as it relates specifically to direct materials and conversion costs? Well, we're gonna make an assumption here. They didn't tell us in this example here, they didn't tell us this, but the assumption, I'll put a star here, is that all raw materials are added at the beginning of the process. So as soon as we have product moving into this department, the sea view shaping department, as soon as it comes in, boom, we immediately drop all the raw materials in. We're, it, it's not done until all the process is done, but the first thing we do is put all the raw materials on. Well, if that's the case, if we have 10,000 units that are sitting there that, had, that aren't finished, and the first thing we did as soon as they arrived is start adding direct materials, well, in terms of equivalent units, our direct materials are covered. That means that we have 10,000 that came in, and in terms of direct materials, we immediately add the materials to it. It's not finished, it's sitting there. 100% complete, we're good to go. But let's, let's also make an assumption here. Let, let me add this assumption. That conversion costs are 20, 25% complete. So if I tell you that they're 25% complete and you remember the formula, we're gonna take 10,000 and multiply it by 25%. That's gonna give us 2,500. We're gonna call this row total equivalent units. Okay. And now this is why we broke it down between direct materials and conversion costs because we had the production level, how, how complete they were, were different between materials and conversion costs. Like I mentioned, direct materials are added at the beginning, so that's 100% complete. So when we look at direct materials, in terms of total equivalent units, we're gonna add up 
what was finished and what is still in work in process. So that comes out to, in terms of direct materials, it comes out to 50,000 equivalent units. However, as it relates specifically to conversion costs, our total is 42,500. These two added together. Why? Because the conversion cost for those items that were completed and transferred out, they're done. So there were 40,000 of those. Well, that's all, that's all done. That's 40,000 equivalent units. But for 10,000, we, we said down here that the conversion costs are 25% complete. So we took the 25%, multiplied it by the 10,000 and came up with 2,500. We then added the completed and transferred out and the ending work in process in terms of equivalent units. And now we have a total of 42,500. So that was step number one. This is how we do step number two. The slide show, shows you exactly how we computed, which I showed you on the spreadsheet. 40,000, 100% for direct materials equivalent, for conversion costs, there were uh, 40,000 as well. Why? Because they're finished, completed, it's done. The partially completed, 100% was added for the direct materials because I told you that asterisk at the bottom said that they were added at the beginning of the process. And then we then computed 10,000 times 25% to come up with 2,500 because I told you that the conversion, the conversion cost was 25% complete. And this is how we came up with the totals. So we've completed step number one and step number two. We're gonna move on to step number three. We're gonna summarize total costs to account for. We've, we've analyzed the units. Now we're gonna analyze the costs. So we're gonna create a new sheet. And that would be step number three, total costs to account for. So we're gonna be given this information as well, the total work in process, costs, the beginning work in process, well, that was zero. We're gonna to add to that, costs added during October. This should be provided as well. If you're working for a company, you're gonna to have to go find those costs. They're, they'll be in the general ledger. For direct materials, we added $140,000 of costs. And for conversion costs, we added 68,000. These are gonna be given. There's no way for you to know unless it's provided. The total amount is $208,000. So therefore, total costs to account for Ending sentences with a preposition. It's not usually very good, but. So we sum up direct materials, 140, conversion cost, 68, and total cost to account for is $208,000. Now, just so that we know a little asterisk here. Total cost to account for must always equal total costs accounted for in step five. This is the total cost in the work in process inventory account. Okay, so that takes care of step number three. 
summarize the total cost to account for. We just did that. We're going to move on to step number four, compute the cost per equivalent unit. So step number four is going to be cost per equivalent unit. We still have the same same categories. We have direct materials and conversion costs. So we're going to start off with the total costs to account for, and that comes from step three. All right, so let's go over here, step number three. For direct materials, the total cost was 140,000 and 68,000 for conversion costs. 140, 68. We got those from step number three. From here, we're going to go into divided by total equivalent units. And this is coming from step two. Well, step two, so we're looking for equivalent units for direct materials and conversion. Step two, way over here, total equivalent units for direct materials and conversion costs. Direct materials was 50,000 and conversion costs is 42.5. So let's take those numbers and those carry right over. By the way, I'll go ahead and label this as dollars. And these are units, so this is gonna be 50,000 and 42.5. So from there, we're going to be able to compute the cost per equivalent unit. 140,000 divided by 50,000, $2.80. For direct materials, we had a total cost of 140,000. We had equivalent units that we computed of 50,000. So the cost per equivalent unit is $2.80. And we're going to do the same thing for conversion costs. $68,000 divided by $42,500 will give us $1.60 equivalent unit. Last step, step number five, assign total costs to units completed and to units in ending working process. So we've labeled this schedule as step five, assigning total costs. So our first section on the top of this is completed and transferred out. So completed and transferred out, that's equivalent units Equivalent units completed and transferred out. We're going to get that from step number two as it relates to direct materials and conversion costs. Completed and transferred out 40,000 and 40,000. We're going to multiply those. Cost per equivalent unit from step four. Cost per equivalent unit for direct materials was $2.80 and for conversion cost was $1.60. So 2.8, 1.6, 1 the next row down, we're going to look at
costs assigned to units completed and transferred out. Well, to do this, just a simple computation, 40,000 units multiplied by $2.80 per unit gives us a total of 112, 112,000 dollars. And then we're gonna do the same for conversion, 40,000 units at $1.60. And our total so far for completed and transferred out, $176,000. So that takes care of the completed and transferred out units. But we still have to account for work in process. So we have the equivalent units in ending work in process. This is gonna be step number two. This is where we're getting them from. Step number two. Let's go look. Step number two. Okay, so ending work in process. For direct materials, it was 10,000. And for conversion costs, it was 2,500. 10,000 and 2,500. And we're gonna take the cost per equivalent unit. It's the same cost per equivalent unit. And that comes from step number four. So we have those numbers already. We just used them up here. And what we're going to come up with is the cost assigned to units in ending work in process. So 10,000 times $2.80 is going to give us a total of $28,000. And then we do the same here for conversion costs was 2,500 units, equivalent units multiplied by the cost per equivalent unit of $1.60 gave us a total of $4,000. This we can also add, and we come up with $32,000. And if we've done this correctly, we're gonna add the total costs here going to seem like magic show. We call this total, total costs accounted for. And the magic show is going to show us that we accounted for $208,000. Well, both of these are actually magic shows, but you should be able to reference step three on this one. Okay. Step number three. Well, let's go to step number three. Oh my goodness. Step number three shows total costs to account for $208,000. Boom. $208,000. So if we want to analyze this a little bit more, we can take the average cost of one completely shaped unit is $4.40. Well, how do we come up with that? $176,000. This is the total costs, $176,000. Divided by 40,000 units. Forty thousand units. That is what we had finished. That was finished and completed. Forty thousand. So we had forty thousand units. One hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars for the completed and transferred out. One hundred seventy-six thousand divided by forty thousand gives us four dollars and forty cents. The sum of direct material cost per equivalent unit plus the conversion cost per equivalent unit. Are you kidding me? Let's check this again. We could have just done it like this. Take the $2.80, 
and the dollar sixty. O M G. Is it a magic show? Four dollars and forty cents. I wonder if we can do that for partially shaped units. The average cost is three dollars and twenty cents. How do we do that? We take the three dollar thirty-two thousand dollars. $32,000 and divided by the equivalent units, 10,000, 10,000 were started, and we come up with $3.20. Now, we, we can't do it with these because if we add this to, we're gonna end up with $4.40. That doesn't work because these aren't fully completed, okay? This is not fully completed. This works here because these were completed, transferred out, ready to go, so all the costs apply since these weren't completed and transferred out of that. But we still use the total costs divided by the amount that were work in process, 32,000 divided by 10,000 gives us $3.20. Some conceptual items to review, sustainability and process costing. Process costing is conducive to employee lean practices which eliminate economic waste. Therefore, that is consistent with sustainability. And then we're adding green practices in the context of minimizing or eliminating harmful environmental consequences. And we could, in order to reinforce our commitment towards sustainability and process costing, we could require there be waste audits and trash audits, and that will help confirm that we are heading in the right direction. 